So I just got done watching the debates and boy, that was really an interesting fiasco. So for the first time we had Michael Bloomberg on the stage, the billionaire who bought his way onto the debate stage. As you guys remember, I did a video about how he paid off the DNC, he donated $300,000 to the DNC directly. And then I think $800,000 to local state DNC parties. Basically, he don donated something over a million dollars to the DNC, and they changed the rules for him to be able to appear there since he has no uh, individual donors. Now, honestly, the most striking part of this debate to me was the end. Democracy died. Okay? I mean, <laughs> it was already dead. Make no mistake. Uh, the entire democratic process was already dead anyway, but it died on national TV another time. Okay? So basically, Chuck Todd, he asked every one of the candidates, what is your opinion if we come to the DNC, we come to the Democratic National Convention in Milwaukee in summer after the primaries are all done, and none of you has a majority, you know, only one of you has a plurality, how are you going to act in that scenario? I'll show you the video, let's take a look, and then we'll discuss. We are at the end here. I got to let that one go. We are, we, are not, we are less than two weeks away from a national primary. And I want to ask all of you this simple question. There's a very good chance none of you are going to have enough delegates to the Democratic National Convention to clinch this nomination. Okay? If that happens, I want all of your opinions on this. Should the person with the most delegates at the end of this primary season be the nominee, even if they are short of a majority? Senator Sanders, I'm going to let you go last here because I know your view on this. <laughs> so instead, I will start with you, Mayor Bloomberg. Whatever the rules of the Democratic Party are, they should be followed. And if they have a process, which I believe okay. they do, I'm trying to do so this that everybody to else, fast. everybody can... Do, can so you can, want the convention to work its will? Yes. Senator Warren. But a convention working its will means that people have the delegates that are pledged to them and they keep those delegates until so the leading you come person? to the convention. No? All okay. of the people. All righty. Vice President Biden. Play by the rules. Yes or no? Leading person with the delegates. Should they be the nominee or not? No. Let the process work its way out. Mayor Buttigieg? Not necessarily. Not to listen Senator majority. Klobuchar? Let the process work. Senator Sanders? Well, the process includes 500 super delegates on the second ballot. So I think All that right. the will of the people should okay. prevail. Yes. Uh, thank you, guys. Most votes should become the nominee. Five no's and a yes. So did you notice at the beginning how Chuck Todd says, uh, Bernie, I'm going to let you go last because we all know your opinion. And then the whole crowd, the audience laughs. That is so dystopian. It's like, oh, we know you're the only sensible person who actually respects the will of the people. So I'm going to let you go last. And everyone's ha 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 ha, like, like a bunch of sheep. Like they've become so complacent to this undemocratic process. It's unbelievable. It, it's, it's frightening. It's, it's really scary. Like this is the electorate and they are fine with this kind of mockery. It's really dystopian. If you're not frightened by that, you really need to wake up. A lot of people have become complacent. They've become accepting of this undemocratic status quo. And they're basically sheep. And they find it funny. They find it amusing. When the only candidate on stage who actually, re actually respects the will of the people is mocked. I mean, this is really scary. I was like, oh my god. So anyway, you know, getting down to what these people said. Basically, all of these candidates, except Bernie Sanders, said that, no, if we go into the Democratic National Convention, the person with the most delegates is not automatically the nominee. Basically, what that means is, I don't care that this person got the most votes that most people, most of the electorate voted for them. I don't care. Democracy doesn't matter to me. One person, one vote doesn't matter to me. Let the convention work its way. Let the corrupt internal politics and this archaic, barbaric system of delegates and superdelegates work its way. Let the DNC do its thing. And, you know, whoever gets the delegates gets the delegates. You know what? They always talk about unity every single day. Oh, we need to unify the Democratic Party. Unity, unity. We need to get behind one candidate. We need to defeat Trump. Everybody, unity, unity. What happened to that? All of a sudden, it doesn't matter. All of a sudden, unity doesn't count at the Democratic National Convention. Everyone keeps their delegates. Be selfish. Ignore the will of the people. Forget unity. This is ridiculous. I mean, this is the epitome of hypocrisy. It is a complete mockery. All this talk of unity that you hear 24-7 
is all a bunch of lies. They don't care about that one single bit. When it comes down to it, all they want is a corporatist, a centrist, a status quo establishment figure to get the nomination. Anyone but Bernie Sanders. When it comes to Bernie Sanders, if he's the front runner, all of a sudden unity doesn't matter. Unity is out the window. Democracy is dead, man. And it died again <laughs> on stage last night. Okay? I mean, you have five out of six presidential candidates on the debate stage, on national television, telling you directly to your faces that they do not respect the will of the people. They do not respect one person, one vote. They do not care about who people actually choose, who the majority of the people actually vote for. They don't care. That is exactly what they told you. And that is exactly the message they are communicating to the nation. That is really, really concerning. This is really the worst part of the entire debate. It's so dystopian and scary. As you can see, Elizabeth Warren... It's very funny that she's on board with this whole undemocratic process of giving the, the nomination to not necessarily the person with the most votes, but whoever the DNC chooses, whoever the puppet masters choose. It's very amusing because she has said herself that we must abolish the electoral college and we should do one person, one vote, and the majority, the will of the people is what matters. Well, my view is that every vote matters. And the way we can make that happen <laughs> is that we can have national voting, and that means get rid of the electoral college <laughs> and everybody can. And not just her, but Pete Buttigieg, I'm pretty sure, has said that before. Well, first of all, we've got to repair our democracy. The electoral college needs to go because it's made our society less and less democratic. And we you have tons of people in the establishment that were screaming about this once Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump because she actually won the popular vote, right? And they were screaming about, oh, we need to abolish the Electoral College, rightfully so. But now when it's inconvenient for them, all of a sudden, they're not on board anymore with one person, one vote and actually carrying out a democratic process. No, now they want the corrupt system. They want the shenanigans. They want the behind the scenes in the smoke filled back room corruption to work its way. That's really disgusting. And this is just another example when you really see Elizabeth Warren's true colors. Again, I've said this before when the chips fall, man, when the cards are down, when it's crunch time, Elizabeth Warren will always be on the side of the establishment. Always. Always. She puts up this facade of being a progressive. She pretends that she's on board with progressive policies, but when it comes down to it, she is not going to fight for them. When she has to actually make a move, she's going to play it safe and she's going to stick with the establishment because that's what her donors want her to do. That's what she's always done. And that's convenient for her political career. She's all about advancing or maintaining her political career. She's not about fighting for people and doing the inconvenient thing. Remember that. She always does this. In 2016, she refused to endorse Bernie Sanders. She went with Hillary. She's always taken corporate money. She votes for military budgets because she wants um, jobs in her state from the military industrial complex. She will always play by the establishment rules. Always. And this is just another proof of that. Her true colors coming through. The veil lifted. Very concerning stuff. I mean, you think that's progressive? <laughs> and it's, it's just a contradiction on top of it. Like, not only is she clearly blatantly on the side of the establishment, but she contradicts herself. And Pete Buttigieg contradicts himself. And the, all of them, they all scream about, oh, we need one person, one vote when it's Hillary. But when it, when it comes to this nomination and, and it's looking like Bernie Sanders is going to get it, then all of a sudden, no, 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 no. Oh, I, I, I don't care about that. I don't care about what the majority of the people want. Unbelievable unbelievable so this is really a cause for concern because it really could be a reality that we go into this democratic national convention and none of the candidates have a majority and it's indeed a plurality but man if they try to play tricks oh my god it's really going to be a nightmare you know in 2016 bernie sanders conceded he um gave all his delegates he suspended his campaign and gave it to Hillary Clinton. Madam Chair, I move that the convention suspend the procedural rules. I move that all votes, all votes cast by delegates be reflected in the official record 
and I move that Hillary Clinton be selected as the nominee of the Democratic Party for President of the United States. He conceded, but they won't do that for him this time. That's essentially what they're saying. So Bernie Sanders, he has to give up. He has to concede in the Democratic National Convention for Hillary Clinton. But if Bernie Sanders has a plurality this time, the other candidates are not going to do the same for him. I mean, what is that? What the hell is that? And I can really see it possible that we go into the Democratic National Convention and Elizabeth Warren refuses to concede her delegates or, or you know, move to give Bernie Sanders the nomination. I can very much see that. And the same with Pete Buttigieg. It's, this is a reality that you have to reckon with, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, dude, these guys don't want Bernie Sanders. They are going to do everything they can. I keep telling you this. From the moment the campaign started last year, every step of the way, whether we're talking about mainstream media, whether we're talking about the DNC, whether we're talking about local state parties like the Iowa Democratic Party, they are trying every trick in the book to make sure that Bernie Sanders is tripped up that he loses momentum, that he drops out of the race. They want to crush his campaign in any way possible. I do not see them giving up easily. I, I don't even know what's going to happen, man. It's really, this is a, a roller coaster and it's a cliffhanger. They just won't stop playing dirty. So they better give up and concede and give the delegates to Bernie Sanders because that's respecting the democratic process. I mean, even though the, there's nothing democratic about uh, this convention, about superdelegates, or delegates in general. There's nothing democratic about the Electoral College, but they need to respect the will of the people. And if they don't, man, they are going to lose that big. I can assure you, there are many people who are going to be disenfranchised by this because you're lucky. The DNC is lucky that you have so many millennials, that you have so many uh, Zoomers, you have so many younger people that are getting involved in the democratic process that are actually going out and voting now. They're lucky because they're inspired by Bernie Sanders. He's motivating them. He's turning out the base, right? So they're doing that in the hopes that, yeah, we want, to, we want to elect a progressive like Bernie Sanders. We want someone who actually represents us, who's actually speaking sense, who's not corrupted. We want him in power. So we're going to go and register with the party. We're going to register as Democrats. We're going to go vote for Bernie Sanders. We're going to participate in the democratic process. But if it comes to the end, if it comes to the end point and they screw him over, I can assure you many people... I'm talking scores of millennials or Zoomers are going to quit the Democratic Party and never vote again. Best believe that. Never mind if there's going to be riots or whatever happens after that. So they better not pull any tricks, man. They really, really better not. But I wouldn't be surprised if they do. It's, it's really disgusting and nerve-wracking. You know, you just don't know what's going to happen. Like, they, they're so corrupted that it's, it's beyond the imagination. It's beyond the pale. So we'll see, how, we'll see what happens. But like I said before, this was the most uh, abhorrent, the most frightening part of the entire debate. I mean, really, you saw the true colors of all the candidates, and you see that there's only one of them. There's only Bernie Sanders who actually respects the will of the people and democracy.